The NBA is built on old teams like the Knicks, Celtics, and Lakers, and newer teams like the Raptors, Grizzlies, and Pelicans. Old or new, these teams are businesses, and it's the random billionaire behind the teams that I want to talk about. It can be a fiery entrepreneur like Mark Cuban, a former player like Michael Jordan, or just an old school guy like Jerry Reinsdorf. Then, sometimes, an owner is a cheap racist monster who ran his team like a southern plantation, lost way, way more games than he won, and became overshadowed by a far superior franchise in the city he wanted to call home. This is the worst NBA owner. Here's the Donald Sterling we all know and hate. I'm not a racist. Yeah, it bothers me a lot that you want to broadcast that you're associating with black people. I like to help minorities. But you know what? This guy wasn't always a creepy old scumbag. There was once a time that he was a creepy young scumbag. September 6th, the year of our Lord, 1908 and 1. San Diego, California. Donald T. Sterling, a 47-year-old attorney and slumlord, sorry, real estate investor, announces his ownership of the San Diego Clippers in a full-page newspaper ad, vowing to fans, the San Diego Clippers are our team, and I promise you this, I'm going to work for you, I'm going to fight for you, and win for you. And less than a year later, Sterling tried to move the team to Los Angeles, prompting an investigation by six NBA owners. So Sterling made some executive leadership changes to show he wasn't going to move the team, then in 1984 he moved the team anyway. Now, before we head off to LA, I'd like to highlight a quick story that epitomizes Sterling's short legacy in San Diego. In 1982, Sterling promoted a fan free throw shooting contest and said he would pay anyone $500 if they could hit nine of 10. A guy did it, and then Sterling gave him a double or nothing offer. The guy did it again, and Sterling never paid him, so the guy sued him for $1,000. Yeah, this is the owner of an NBA team. So the San Diego Clippers become the Los Angeles Clippers. To Sterling, I'm sure the glitz and glamour of LA was where he thought his Clippers belonged. Envisioning a big time Hollywood Tinseltown rivalry with the Lakers. Now both clubs are called Los Angeles. But here's the problem. If the Lakers are a shiny blockbuster movie, Use the false then the Clippers are the box office flop. So, let the sad, sad era of the LA Clippers begin. It's the mid-80s, and here's what success and failure looks like. The Clippers play their first home game in LA, beating the Knicks 107-105. Ronald Reagan is re-elected President of the United States, defeating Walter F. Mondale in a landslide. Michael Jackson receives a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Coca-Cola changes its recipe and releases new Coke. Everyone hates it. Can somebody out there tell me why Coke did it? The Lakers win their ninth NBA championship over the Boston Celtics in six games. Clippers head coach Jim Lynham is fired and replaced by Don Chaney. Lakers win another NBA Finals against the Celtics. Top Gun is a massive success, solidifying the young Tom Cruise as a level five Thetan, I mean superstar actor. That's right. George Lucas produces Howard the Duck, a horrible movie, excellent nightmare fuel. No more Mr. Nice Duck. And Donald Sterling hires Elgin Baylor as the team's vice president of basketball operations. Sterling apparently had no idea Baylor played in the NBA. When he hired Elgin Baylor to be the general manager, he had not realized that Elgin Baylor had played in the NBA. Elgin Baylor had in fact played in the NBA. Don Chaney is fired and replaced by Gene Shue. There it is, Michael Jordan on the breakaway. The Showtime Lakers repeat, beating the Pistons in the finals. LA, at this point, is without a doubt Lakers town. And the other NBA team in the area just keeps putting up losing seasons. In the draft, the Clippers select Danny Manning, first overall. Sterling was later quoted saying, I'm offering a lot of money for a poor black kid, he said. That was in regard to Danny Manning. Head coach Gene Shu is fired and replaced by Don Casey. Don Casey is fired and replaced by Mike Schuler. T2 is released, a rare sequel that is better than the original. That's right, I said it. I'll be back. And Highlander 2 The Quickening comes out, which is an example of a piece of shit sequel. Remember Highlander. Head coach Mike Schuler is fired and replaced by Matt Calvin, who is then replaced by Larry Brown. A very tough loss for the Clippers. And after 10 straight losing seasons, the Clippers make the playoffs. 
They play the Utah Jazz led by Carl, the Mailman, Malone, and John Dadball Stockton. This series was mostly Ron Harper and Doc Rivers trying their very best against a way better Jazz team. At the same time, three LAPD officers were acquitted in the beating of Rodney King, and riots broke out in the city of Los Angeles. So they decided to move Game 4 of the Clippers Jazz series to the Anaheim Convention Center. You know, because even when your city has descended into chaos, for some reason you have to play basketball and the Clippers eventually lose their series to the Jazz in five games. Head coach Larry Brown is fired, replaced by Bob Weiss. Bob Weiss is fired, replaced by Bill Fitch. Braveheart is released and wins Best Picture, but we all lose because of Mel Gibson. Showgirls is released and becomes the trashiest movie ever, but we all win because of shameless nudity. I'm a dancer. Head coach Bill Fitch is fired and replaced by Chris Ford. In the draft, the Clippers use their first overall pick to get center Michael Alawakandi. Who, you might ask? Exactly. After a lockout, the season was shortened to 50 games. The Clippers finished the season with a 9-41 record. Clippers hire Laker great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to help the struggling Alawakandi, and Jabbar quits after a year, certifying Alawakandi as a genuine draft bust. Sorry. Head coach Chris Ford is fired and replaced by Jim Todd. It's an embarrassment to the players and the coaching staff. Donald Sterling has a woman named Alexandra Castro sign a friendship agreement, which would protect him from any palimony payments. This agreement states that Sterling is happily married, has a family, and has no intention of engaging in any activity inconsistent with his domestic relationship. Nothing is more romantic than a contract with your girlfriend that says, I'll never leave my wife for you, and more importantly, you'll never get any of my money. Man, that Donald Sterling must be one smooth guy. In a deposition about his relationship with Castro, Sterling had all sorts of classy things to say about her and their activities. But all the lawyers really wanted to know was if it was his handwriting or not. Gross. Anyway, the Clippers join the Lakers and Kings in the new Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles. The Lakers and Kings get scheduling priority over the lowly Clippers, cementing them as the little brother team. We consider this to be our arena. Or secret attic brother team or Mutant Shed Brother team, whichever you like. The Shaq and or Kobe Bryant Lakers beat the Pacers to win the NBA Finals. Head coach Jim Todd is fired and replaced by Alvin Gentry. The Shaq and or Kobe Bryant Lakers beat the 76ers to win another NBA Finals. And then the Shaq and or Kobe Bryant Lakers beat the Nets to win yet another NBA Finals, completing the three-peat. Head coach Alvin Gentry is fired and replaced by Dennis Johnson. Dennis Johnson is fired and replaced by Mike Dunleavy. And after 12 straight losing seasons, Donald Sterling's team finally puts together a winning campaign and makes the playoffs. The series versus the Denver Nuggets featured Carmelo Anthony with those mid-2000 cornrows, Sam Cassell being a hero, and Chris Kamen getting grabbed in the nuts. This dude reached from behind me, grab my nuts and pull them, you know, back towards, try to rip them off, basically. LA won the series in five games. Don't worry though, they lost to the Suns in the next round and promptly got back to being a disappointment to everyone. VP and GM of basketball operations Elgin Baylor resigns after 22 years. In that time, the Clippers managed only two winning seasons, had a win-loss record of 607 to 1153, and won only one playoff series. It's hard to say how much of this is Baylor's fault, but it also might have been a team culture thing. Baylor would later make a claim that Donald Sterling used to bring women into the locker room and point out the black players. Oh, he did it on many occasions. What would he say? Oh, look at those beautiful black bodies. Uh, weird. In the draft, the Clippers used their first overall pick to select Blake Griffin. Apparently, after getting to LA, Donald Sterling paraded Griffin around one of his white parties. Picture a grown man, like, like walking behind <laughs> a, like a 75-year-old man, I don't know how he was at the time. Now, to clarify, that's a party where everyone wears white clothes, not just a party for white people. Griffin broke his kneecap in an exhibition game against the Hornets and was out the entire season. Head coach Mike Dunleavy is fired and replaced by Kim Hughes, and the Kobe Bryant and or Luke Walton Lakers win another NBA Finals. Kim Hughes is fired and replaced by Vinny Del Negro. The Last Airbender gets a horrifyingly lame big budget adaptation by M. Night Shyamalan, who continues to make absolute shit. And Toy Story 3 makes a cool $1,066,969,703, the third highest grossing animated film of all time. Spoilers, all the toys die at the end. Speaking of blockbusters, in a massive deal, the Clippers trade Eric Gordon, Chris Kamen, Al Farouk Aminu, and a first round pick for Chris Paul. Paul was almost traded to the Lakers, but NBA commissioner David Stern vetoed the trade. I didn't <laughs> veto anything. Acting on behalf of the owners, as the owner's rep, uh, New Orleans decided not to make the trade. But that representative was you, if I'm right. Correct. So I guess things are looking out for the Clippers. Now with Griffin and Paul on the team, Lob City is born. 
Head coach Vinny Del Negro is fired and replaced by Doc Rivers. Then, after the best season Donald T. Sterling has ever seen as owner, with a team that is very much trending toward b-ball success, coupled with an ailing, clearly on his way out Kobe Bryant, Sterling may have begun to achieve the thing he's always wanted most. His team dethroning the Lakers to become the true NBA powerhouse of Los Angeles. But then, TMZ drops a taped conversation between Sterling and his confidant slash assistant slash possible girlfriend, V. Stiviano. I'm with minorities, why? Do you think he's a racist? Of course he is. NBA commissioner Adam Silver finds him $2.5 million and bans Sterling from the league. For life. Ultimately leading to the forced sale of the Clippers. North Korea publicly condemns the upcoming comedy film, The Interview, not just because James Franco is in it. They hate us, cause they ain't us. Steve Ballmer, the former CEO of Microsoft, purchases the LA Clippers for $2 billion. Remember, Donald Sterling originally bought the team for $13.5 million, and he sold it for $2 billion. I never dreamt that this could happen. It's a terrible, terrible nightmare. Fuck you, old man. So Donald Sterling's NBA legacy is a failure on many levels. As an owner, he had a team that never won. As a businessman, he failed to hire the right people to be successful. And as a human, he was clearly disrespectful and bigoted to those around him. So remember folks, if and when you own a team, it's simple, don't be a pile of shit. Thanks for watching The Worst. Sorry this one got a little dark, but sometimes you gotta call out the worst person instead of the worst team. If you have any ideas for future episodes of The Worst, leave them down in the comments and remember, subscribe to SB Nation.